they need about eight things to happen. They actually need the Giants and the Redskins to tie. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a billionth of a chance for the Buccaneers to still make the playoffs, even if they oh. win and go nine and seven. Yeah, if they win and go nine and seven, I think they lose. So the you're saying, okay, yeah, I got you. Um, yeah. Giants already clinched a wild card, and the the winner winner or lose um, that in the NFC North battle between the Pack and the Lions. Both teams are in no matter what. Just the winner takes the division. That's it. Okay, gotcha. That is it. So, uh, yeah, Tampa Tampa needs a bunch of things to happen, and it ain't happening. I think if Detroit loses, uh, possibly. It's, it's pretty convoluted, man, but I think they both have the same conference and non-conference record. It's it's down to the wire. So this is the decider. The winner of that wins the division, and I think then Detroit is the wild card or Green Bay is the wild card. But the Redskins, if they win, I think that they may take the wild card spot from one of those two teams, depending on who it is. No, okay. I, you know what, Joe? Here's the scenario: is if uh, no matter who wins the Green Bay Detroit game, the winner of that game wins that division. If the Redskins lose, the other team, the loser will go to the playoffs, whether it be Green Bay or Detroit. Uh, but if Washington wins, then the winner of Green Bay Detroit wins the division, and that's it. And only one team's coming out of that division, out of the North. Mm. Algebra class all over again. It is. Well, because if the Redskins win, they'll be 9-6-1. and one. That tie is what's making everything so complicated. Because if they're 9-6-1, and one, and then the loser of the Green Bay-Detroit game will be 9-7. and seven. They'll have that additional loss, and they're out. Washington's in three teams from the East. That is your NFC playoff breakdown, baby. So Washington just has to win. Washington has to win, and they're in. Who they got? Nah, they play the Giants. Mm, giant. That's interesting. Will who the giant? Will the Giants rest because they've already clinched no matter what? That's right. They've clinched the wild card. So well, they're they, already in no matter what. Yeah, they may rest. I don't know that you run Eli out there for three quarters. I don't know that Ryan Nassib is going to come beat the Washington Redskins, but we're going to find out. Oh, that'll be interesting to see what old Mister McAdoo does for that game. It it's it's one of the few games. Uh, of the week that, that do matter. I will say this. The good thing is it's the 425 game. And the Giants will be automatically, they'll be the five seed, no? I believe that is correct, yeah. So there's really are. nothing for them to gain in this there's game. Nothing. I think they are the five seed, and that's that. Mm-hmm. Um, there so is Washington nothing. might get welcomed aboard. They could. That's just so tough with that division game at the end of the season. Like I said, though, the good news is it's a 430 game, and because it's a 430 game, you at least have the whole afternoon to see a few other things happen. I just don't think that Greg Green Bay games at night. So there's nothing that can happen throughout the day, throughout the day that's going to change Washington's life. The AFC, on the other hand, is a little bit more complicated. The Patriots have clinched uh, the division. Home field throughout as well. The Patriots have not clinched home field throughout. Yes, they have. They absolutely have. No, they absolutely have not. Um, the Raiders could still go 13-3, and three, and if New England were to lose, they're going 13-3, and three, and I think the Raiders hold a tiebreaker there. Why is that? Uh, I'm looking at some division records, 6-1, and 7-1. One, one, who knows? There could be a strength of schedule tiebreaker in there somewhere silly. But if both teams are 13-3, and three, I think the Raiders have the tiebreaker. Um, and even if they do or don't, that's why New England hasn't clinched yet, because you need the outcomes of those games. Well, New England... That's not good for your. That's not good for the Raiders in that chance because they, they have a tough game at at Denver. Whereas the um, the Patriots, who do they New got England, this week? New England, maybe maybe at Chuck E. Cheese by like one thirty on Sunday. Yeah, who do they who do they square up against this week? Well, uh, it ain't good. I don't think it's good. I think they have Miami, and Miami has nothing to play for either. In Miami's South Beach or in, or in Foxborough. That game, my friend, is in Miami. That's South Beach, buddy. That is that is something. I Miami's already in. They've clinched. Miami is in. They have clinched that wild card spot. Mm. They, they are ten the and five. Yeah, Miami is ten and five. They clinched the playoffs. They did that last week. Um, the Pittsburgh Steelers have clinched the AFC North. The Houston Texans have clinched the AFC South. And the Raiders and Chiefs are still hanging on because the Raiders are twelve and three. The Chiefs are eleven and four. Kansas City holds the tiebreaker over the Raiders because of two victories. So if Kansas City were to win and beat San Diego, which I'm telling you right now, the Kansas City Chiefs are going to pummel the San Diego Chargers this week. Oh, 
all oh yeah, that's all conventional wisdom would say that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to pummel the San Diego Chargers this week. But the you are the one. You are the one win on the Cleveland Browns schedule this year. Uh, does that mean it? That mean it's over for Mr. McCoy? It should. However, you're going to find out if that team shows up. Well, the problem with the San Diego Chargers is that's not the team they started the season with. They're down like 19 starters. I, I don't know that Mike McCoy gets fired. I don't know that he does. I thought he did last year. I thought he should have last year. Uh, but well, we're, we're, it all, it's all going to matter, too, if the team moves. Well, that's, and I think year. that's why McCoy, I thought that's why he kept the job last year, is because of the looming move and all those things that went on. Uh, but I, uh, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I just think that that team is riddled with injury, and it doesn't matter to me what you do. This isn't the team he started the season with. I don't think you can hold Mike McCoy accountable for as bad as the Chargers have been. Uh, and, and all conventional wisdom would say, boy, Kansas City's going to walk in there and just boat race them. What if they don't? What if, what if San Diego shows up and says, you know what, we got one left in the tank and, uh, and a bunch of young guys who are trying to, like you always say, they're, they're, they're playing for the number of the name on the back of their jersey. What happens if some of these guys show up and beat the Kansas City Chiefs? I, can never, I cannot see that happening because the Kansas City Chiefs have a lot to pay a play for, and if that does happen to the Kansas City Chiefs, shame on them. Yeah, I can't see that happening under any circumstance. Uh, the line in that game, Kansas City's a six-point favorite. It's probably a pretty good move to waddle up to the booth here at, at the sports book and just make that play right now. I think the Chiefs are Division team, okay. is that game in San Diego or Kansas City? The game's in San Diego, which is just good weather. That's all that means. You'll have more Chiefs mm-hmm. fans in San Diego than you will. Think about it. Anybody with an extra coin laying around is going to want to take a trip to San Diego in December. If you're a team. And Miami, does Miami need to clinch the um, – they don't Although Miami can't, they, they cannot clinch the fifth seed. They're the sixth seed, no matter what, right? Miami, yep. Miami can't do anything about it. This is Kansas City's plan for the division and the number two seed. So they will. I think you could see New England actually has more to play for than they do than Miami does in this game. Uh, yeah. Nope. If they don't want to go to, if they don't want to go to, uh, they don't want to risk going to Kansas City in January or Oakland. Well, but he, well, yeah, and I, I keep. I'm just discounting. They, can't, they don't have. They're not going to have to go to Kansas City because New England loses. will be thirteen and three. Well, that, and that's yeah, that's what I'm looking at. New England loses. They're thirteen and three, and, and if Kansas City wins, they're twelve and four. New England's still the number one seed. The only thing that can happen to New England to lose that seed is if the Raiders win and they lose, and they're both thirteen and three. And I, I don't even know where the tiebreaker is to to make that adjustment. It could be points scored. Who knows. Uh, but that's the only thing that could happen, and I don't see it happening. I do think Denver shows up and plays the Raiders. There's so this is it. They're gonna, yeah. That's a hated rob. Those two teams hate each other. They hated rivalry. Yeah, um, Denver. Yeah, they want they, they, they want to spoil that. Numerous times over the last few years, when these two teams have met at the end of the season, it hasn't mattered at all for the Raiders, and they show up and play. Yeah, these division games this is a great idea for NFL scheduling. What they installed years ago is to have these these division games at the end of the season. It's a good idea. It keeps it competitive. Because uh, prior to that, when you saw end of the season when Pittsburgh would play Atlanta and one of the teams would be out, it would be a joke. It would be a waste of, of three hours. They should almost not even play those games. It, it's a rookie tryout at that point. Those were garbage. So these are good. I, I certainly do like this. It keeps the tail end of the season Pretty hip because we're 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 limping into it, man. We're all a little bit bruised, battered, and beaten throughout the course of the season. Well, it looks to me like the Dolphins are going to get the. Um, <clears throat> how's this? Uh, trying to think how this would go. They play the uh, four. They play the four seed, so that or the three seed. Sorry, and that would be Dol- Miami would go to Pittsburgh. That's an interesting matchup. Yeah, it's a pretty good matchup because Miami went into Pittsburgh and whipped their ass earlier in the season. Remember. And then, then the Raiders would go to Houston. Hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Miami pulls. Oakland would only go to Houston if they lose. Actually, that was uh, that game was in South Beach where uh, Pittsburgh went down there and uh, took a shit. That's it, actually it was, one of the. That was actually Pittsburgh was laying eight points. I remember in that game. I remember that game perfectly. That's actually the game that turned the ship around for the Dolphins. Yeah, you're good. That was that was that was week five. <laughs> yeah, I just remember that game because Pittsburgh was an eight point. Eight point um, road road favorite in that yeah, game. Yeah, I don't remember in Miami land based them, and that's when I really thought that the Miami Dolphins and Ryan Tannehill stunk. And I think Ryan Tannehill is just a very average player. I think Matt Moore looked pretty good his last two outings. 
you know, against against the Jets team, who is pretty you know is pretty much like a junior high team, and then you yeah. have Bill, then you, then you have the the Buffalo Bills who. And this this was all kinds of disarray yeah, going in. We, yeah, Rex they're, Ryan they're, was a lame Rex Ryan was a lame duck on the field yesterday. Sure was. Sure was. Well, yeah, and that's another thing too, man. Let's um let's talk a little bit about some of these coaching vacancies. Mm. It, it's it's a big you know what the hell because Buffalo, who's going to Buffalo? Jacksonville, who's going to Jacksonville? Do you see a pattern forming here? The Los Angeles Rams, let's say St. Louis Rams. These are all teams that over the last 15 years have always needed a head coach. These are all teams who are always in this conversation. Buffalo, who's the next head coach in Buffalo? Coaching carousel, and I wonder about other guys getting fired too. Mike McCoy, we'll wait on that one. Uh, I wonder about my man Todd Bowles. I'm going to tell you what, I don't think Mike McCoy gets fired. I don't think he does. I think you get a pass because of all the injuries. I really do. I think you get a pass. Um, and I think that if you watch the Chargers at all this year, I know, and I didn't watch them a ton, but I did watch some, a lot of bad breaks. Lost a lot of games late on fumbles, on just bonehead mistakes. Now look, that all falls on the head coach. I get it. Josh Lambeau missed two kicks, two field goals this week. They showed Mike McCoy in the silence, just shaking his head like, what do I have to do to win a football game? You lost to the Browns. You lost to the Browns. I don't. I know that that's a reason enough. But I, look, who if you you fire Mike McCoy, who are you replacing him with? Josh McDaniels <laughs> is taking the San Diego Chargers job. Um, uh, Steve Spagnuolo is not taking the San Diego Chargers job. Jim Bob Cooter may take the San Diego Chargers job. There's there's names that'll come up. But again, Jim, the point is, although all, all my man Jim Bob, he might have had a little responsibility for Matt Stafford having one hell of a season this year. I, I think so, and I think Jim Bob Cooter's name is going to come up in discussion. What, impr- what impressed me more is what, what a season Stafford had without Megatron. I thought Matt Stafford was excellent this year. I thought he was excellent the whole season. I think he was excellent years before, and I think sometimes maybe we're seeing it. I've got my theory about Kelvin Benjamin. In Carolina, I think maybe sometimes you can have a little bit of a chemistry issue when you have a great wide receiver or this guy who's perceived to be a great wide receiver. Calvin Johnson was great. Excellent, excellent player. You had the game plan for him. You had to cover him. You had to climb up his ass. Calvin Benjamin's not, to me, I don't know. Calvin Benjamin's a nice, big possession receiver. Make a great catch, great in the red zone kind of stuff. But I felt like Calvin Benjamin created this this discourse with the Carolina Panthers. Uh, But... Calvin Johnson didn't do that, but you take Calvin Johnson out of the equation. He's not very fast. Calvin Benjamin's biggest uh, Achilles heel going into the draft, I remember him saying, he's just not very fast. No, he's slow, and he's not somebody to worry about. That was a better offense last year when the backside of that defense had to worry about Ted Ginn taking the top off. I really, really believe that, because once they started to go back to that a little bit this year and get Ted Ginn involved in that offense, secondary had to worry about it. All of a sudden, you run the ball a little bit better. Cam's a little bit quicker out of the option because you're losing somebody that's not up your nose. It just, it, 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 I think that they will probably take a step back and evaluate how they get Kelvin Benjamin involved because it's going to have something to do with that offense. Uh, who is the other team I'm talking about? Oh, uh, but Detroit. Jim Bob Cooter's had a nice year, man. But his name, his name will come up in discussion. I do think Tom Coughlin is as good as hired in Jacksonville. We'll see. We'll see. It's it's um that it's all going to come down to. I think I think the Jaguars the Jaguars indeed. If Tom Coughlin really had the interest in taking that job, they'd take him with open arms. But he's interviewing, um, he's interviewing tomorrow. Ooh. Well, yeah, I think as good as his. I really do. I think the Jacksonville Jaguars are crazy to hire Tom Coughlin. I think that is a crazy move. He's seventy some years old. I know Marv Levy went to went to the Super Bowl at seventy some years old. I understand that, but. Well, your question is, I know it's it's kind of a temporary solution being he's not going to be a long-term head coach, but no, you want not. someone to come in there and fix things almost. I mean, who else is better, though? You're right, available? and that's where his value lies, is he's somebody that can come in there and teach your organization how to be a good organization again, because he, he was a good organization, a great organization with the Giants. You win two Super Bowls, you're great. You're doing a great job. You're doing a great job you win two Super Bowls, because you can almost win one on accident in the NFL. As a head coach, you can accidentally yeah. Barry Switzer. Yeah, ask, ask Brian. Ask Brian Billick. Brian um, Billick, Barry yeah. Switzer, um, Bill Callahan accidentally went to a Super Bowl. 
Yep. 